listening to The Mark Cox Show. Follow the show on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Mark Cox Show. Your nomination is part of a Republican strategy to capture our judicial branch of government. That is why the Senate Republicans kept this Supreme Court seat vacant for more than a year and why they left 30 judicial nominees who had received bipartisan approval of this committee to die on the Senate calendar as President Obama left office. And the uh, plan worked to perfection there. Uh, affectionately known as uh, Dick Durbin uh, commenting there on uh, on the Neil Gorsuch hearing that's underway right now. We're joined by Fox News Radio's John Decker. Uh, John, how are you? Hey, I'm well, Mark. How are you doing today? I- I'm doing fine. You know, as I watch this um uh, this hearing for Gorsuch this morning, I'm not even quite sure why they make the man sit there. They have a camera trained on him, and he's not allowed to say a word. He just has to listen to uh, both sides kind of preach at him or praise him for three hours. Yeah, you got to nod your head a lot when yeah. you're the nominee and sit there in the <laughs> hearing room. I'm watching him right now. I'm in a skybox, essentially, in the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing room. I've been watching and listening to the hearings all morning and obviously into the afternoon as well. And that's what today's all about. It's about all 20 members of the Senate Judiciary Committee making opening statements in 10 minutes in length. And then we'll finally, at the end of the afternoon, hear from Judge Gorsuch, who will make his opening statement. He'll be sworn in. And then tomorrow, the real action begins. That's when Q&A begins, Q&A from each of the senators on the Judiciary Committee. You know, I heard uh, in those comments that Dick Durbin made, he, he said that unlike the Republicans and Merrick Garland, we're going to give you a hearing and we're going to give you a vote. Now, was that an admission that they're, that they're not thinking of trying to stonewall this somehow? You know what I think that was really a reference to was to Merrick Garland. Uh, Merrick Garland, of course, was nominated by President Barack Obama, never got a hearing, never got a vote. And so every Democrat who's taken their 10 minutes time to make an opening statement has referenced Merrick Garland, who I think, you know, every senator on the panel would argue was eminently qualified to sit on the court. It was just that Republicans felt it should be up to the next president to fill that vacant seat on the U.S. Supreme Court. So I think that's what that really was referencing, Mark. Do you think Gorsuch, um, do you think the Democrats are ready? Have you heard any any of your reporting on the fact that several of them had said they'd be willing to filibuster him? Or do you think they're going to keep their powder dry for the next potential Supreme Court justice? Yeah, I think the the real fight is going to be over if there is another vacancy on the Supreme Court. And, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is up there in, in, in years, so is Anthony Kennedy, and maybe President Trump will get another opportunity uh, to make another nominee to the U.S. Supreme Court. But, you know, this particular nomination would not change uh, drastically the ideological balance uh, for the Supreme Court. Um, it would fill the seat of Antonin Scalia, so it would keep things the way they were, uh, before his untimely death last February. I think, you know, that's what Democrats are really looking ahead towards the real fight that would begin once there is or if there is another vacancy on the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, John Decker, do you get the impression that that possibly the fact that uh, Gorsuch seemed to publicly disagree with the president over his criticism of the judiciary and the executive order works to his advantage with some of the Democrats in these hearings? I think so, but I think that, you know, those comments, Mark, uh, were made privately. You know, we haven't heard those comments. We've heard uh, senators and even the administration officials who accompanied Judge Gorsuch uh, make reference to them. Um, That being said, you know, I think that uh, what's um, likely to happen is that there will be some Democrats who will ask him that very question and get him on the record (laughs) publicly to disagree with the president who nominated for him for this vacancy on the U.S. Supreme Court. John, what's the what's the timeline? Has it changed at all? I know originally some, they were hoping for a final vote sometime in mid-April. Uh, what they are looking for right now, it was announced today by the Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley, is a committee vote, a full committee vote on Judge Gorsuch on April the 3rd, and then the full Senate voting on his nomination one week later. These things, however, can slide, uh, but we are looking for things to happen in the month of April, that's for sure. Very good. Well, John, I'll let you get back to uh, covering uh, this hearing today, and we'll look forward to talking to you in the future. 
Excellent. I look forward to it, too. Thanks a lot, Mark. Thank Have you, John. Morning. Appreciate that. Uh, always a good report by, by John Decker there, Fox News Radio, who had a skybox. How about that? Overlooking the uh, festivities. Hmm. And again, up to this point, Neil Gorsuch hasn't said a word. It, it's just, it's kind of weird. You know, I guess, I I, I mean, I've, I've seen these things in the past. Maybe I just never noticed. But in most of these hearings... The first round is just giving the politicians five minutes to pontificate, and then they move on to the next person. And the nominee, whoever it is, just has to sit there and take it with a smile on their face. Of course, uh, Diane Feinstein w- w- probably had some of the most critical comments on Gorsuch that I saw during this. Uh, first of all, she agrees with Dick Durbin that uh, they should have given Mayor Garland a vote. There's no doubt about that. Um, But she also pointed out that, uh, like most liberals, she believes the Constitution of the United States is a living, breathing thing that has to be interpreted you, you, the, basically, the liberals think you need to be a mind reader and and you have to sit on the bench and guess at what the founders would have said about the Internet or automobiles or things that didn't exist when they put together the framework of our government. And And I would argue that that's not what their job is. Their job is to take laws that have been passed by the legislature – and hold them up to what the Constitution says is legal or isn't legal and rule on it. So her criticism of him today is that, well, I hear he's an originalist. That's what we've been told about you. And that's what my questions are going to focus on, uh, Judge Gorsuch, about why you, you, you are an originalist like Antonin Scalia, who's, who by regardless of which side of the, the boat you're on here, even liberals were believed that Scalia brought a lot of heft to the court with his judicial opinions. And yet Dick Durbin and Dianne Feinstein would lead you to believe that this is an attempt by the Republicans to somehow hijack the judicial branch. Listen to uh, Dianne Feinstein earlier this morning. We're here today under very unusual circumstances. It was almost a year ago today that President Obama nominated Chief Judge Merrick Garland for this seat. Unfortunately, due to unprecedented treatment, Judge Garland was denied a hearing, and this vacancy has been in place for well over a year. I just want to say I am deeply disappointed that it's 